we should get love. When the going gets tough and I wanna give up, I will trust in you. Cause you're always gonna lead, always gonna lead, always gonna lead me through. When I'm feeling overwhelmed and almost wanna quit, I will not give in. Cause you're giving me strength, giving me strength, the strength to start. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about grit, while we take a look at the story of someone who met up with a pretty unusual bonfire. Oh, and don't miss this either. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about grit, which is refusing to give up when life gets hard. You know what I think is hard? What? Not using your phone. I'm not using mine right now. You're gonna get that? It could be important. <laughs> oh, it's from you. Well, cell phones can be good. Right, I mean, you might be watching us on a phone right now. Yeah. You have an invitation to play Farm Builder. Ooh. I don't have to look at my phone. You know what? Me neither. I can go longer than you without a phone. Oh, you're on. Let's do it! Yeah, I know. You know, I could be learning Spanish right now. I actually got this really awesome app. I... That might be your new game score. Sounds like a lot of new likes, doesn't it? Ah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, I'm thinking of of something else. Thinking of something oh. else. Thinking of something else. It's time for <laughs> the story before the story. Today we're in the second book of the Old Testament, Exodus. God made a plan to bless the whole world through Abraham and Sarah's family. But their descendants, the Israelites, traveled to Egypt to escape starving. Over time, the Israelites were enslaved, but still, their families grew. After hundreds of years, the Hebrew people cried out to God for help. God heard them and chose an unlikely helper. A Hebrew man named Moses who had been raised in Pharaoh's palace, but ran away to live as a shepherd in Midian. Moses is where our story starts. Take it away. Greetings, everyone. There's fire, darkness, frogs, and a whole lot more in this story, so hold on tight. By the time our story starts, Moses was actually 80 years old. His early years in Pharaoh's palace were just a distant memory. He was living life as an ordinary shepherd until one day. Now, usually when something catches fire, it just burns up, but this bush, it didn't. It glowed like, like a flaming beacon. As Moses edged nearer, a voice called to him from the midst of the fire. Moses. Moses. Here I am. Don't come any closer. Take off your sandals. The place you are standing is holy ground. Moses' hands shook as he tugged off his sandals. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have seen how my people are suffering in Egypt, so I have come down to save them. I will bring them to a good land. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. So many thoughts must have rushed through Moses' head. He had been raised in the palace by Pharaoh's daughter, but that Pharaoh had died and a new Pharaoh was in charge. Also, Moses had no idea if his own people would even accept him. But w what if the Israelites don't believe you sent me? Throw your walking stick on the ground. Okay, Moses did what he was told. Right then and there, God turned Moses' walking stick into a snake! And then back into a stick. Still, Moses was nervous. The bush continued to blaze. Lord, I... I, I'm a terrible speaker in front of people. Go. I will help you speak. <laughs> Couldn't you send someone else? Your brother Aaron can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you. Tell him what to say. I will help both of you speak. Even though the thought of facing Pharaoh probably made him sick with fear, Moses did travel back to Egypt. Together, Aaron and Moses spoke to the Israelites. God has heard you. He will lead us out of Egypt. Yay! We just have to okay it with Pharaoh. Oh boy. Moses just probably wanted to run, but instead he made his way to the palace where he had grown up. With Aaron, he stood his ground before the new Pharaoh. Tell him, the Lord says, let my people go. Then they will hold a feast to honor me in the desert. Aaron repeated the words loudly and clearly, and Pharaoh glared down. Who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Instead of releasing God's people, Pharaoh gave orders for them to work even harder. Now the Israelites were upset with Moses for making things worse. I did what you asked, and now it's just worse. You haven't saved your people at all. Pharaoh will not listen to you. So I will use my powerful hand against Egypt. I will bring the people of Israel out of Egypt. Even though God performed miraculous signs through Moses and Aaron in front of Pharaoh, he still would not listen. So the next morning, Aaron and Moses met Pharaoh down at the Nile River. Moses instructed Aaron what to say and do. The Lord has sent me to you. He says, let my people go, but you have not listened. Here is how you will know I am the Lord. Aaron raised his staff high. I will strike the water with this walking stick. The river will turn into blood. The fish will die, and no one will be able to drink the water. 
The water turned to dark red blood. But still, Pharaoh was stubborn. Ugh. Moses must have been just tempted to give up and go back to Midian, but God called him to speak to Pharaoh again and again. God says, let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to release God's people. And every single time, he went back on his word, even though God sent frogs, followed by gnats and flies. All the Egyptians' cattle died. Ugh. Terrible sores showed up all over the Egyptians and their animals. Hail rained down, destroying crops and tearing leaves from the trees. Ugh. Locusts finished off anything the hail left behind. Then, deep darkness descended across the whole land for three days. And at last came the most awful plague of all. The oldest son of every Egyptian family died. Only the Israelite families were saved by painting the blood of a lamb over their door frames, just as God had told them to do. When Pharaoh saw the terrible thing that had happened, he called Moses one last time. Get out of here, all of you. Just leave us alone. Go. Moses and Aaron gathered the people together. No time to bake your bread, just uh, bring the dough along. The Israelites packed up in the middle of the night and left as quickly as they could, leading their flocks and herds. After hundreds of years, God's people were finally free. After so long, I bet they wanted to give up. Yeah, but they didn't. They kept going. They kept calling out to God. And Moses. I mean, if I were him, I definitely would have wanted to call it a day and leave. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> But Moses held on. He had seen God's presence in the burning bush, and he knew that God saw what he was going through. And the Israelites, too. So, what's our part in the story? Well, when we face tough things, right, we can know that God sees us. God will help us through, even if it's, well, not in the way we expect. Yeah, like, maybe someone keeps being mean to you at school. I mean, that's awful. But you don't have to give up. You can talk to a grown-up about it, and you can trust that God will walk with you every step of the way. Or maybe you've got something that doesn't go away, like a food allergy. Oh yeah, that's a really hard one. But instead of giving up and grumbling, you can trust that God is with you and keep going. Yeah, God never intended us to keep going on our own. So God gave us Jesus to walk with us. And when we put our trust in Jesus, He gives us the power to keep going. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. See you next time. So here's the thing. Hold on because God knows what you're going through. And that's how you grow grit. You have two game invitations waiting. Are you going to get that? Nah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. You really think you can solve that? I'm not you. smart enough for this. Come on, I'll show you. Oh. <laughs>